Hi, Gianni. We sorry. We're sorry you had the stomach flu. That's the worst. Ah. That is totally the worst. So we're this we're with you there. Will make you feel and better. So, um, today we're starting a new idea of work, and it's to remove fluid from a tank. Right? We, since we didn't mean an army tank, we changed the word to container. <laughs> so the first container is going to be the simplest one I could think of, and it's a rectangular container, 3D. It's five. Uh, five. The height of it is five. This base is a six by twelve, and it, we're going to sit it on the x-axis, x and y-axis. So, as we are wont to do. All right. So, add your axis to your picture of the three D tank. That is five high, and six by twelve is the base. And I was wondering what the work is. Find the work to remove the water from the tank. At, and we'll say there's a drain right here at the top. Right there's a drain. Find the work to remove the water. So in many ways, these are going to be the same as any other problem because we're going to need a work integral and we're going to have to have an upper and lower limit and we're going to have to have force times distance, but distance has shrunk away to just a small distance. So that's not going to change. So we've seen that with the satellite and we've seen it with the spring. So these should be easy peasy, monkey math. All right, so I'll set up this one. What I need to do is figure out what the force is. Remember with the spring, it was kx, and with the uh, satellite, it was constant over x squared. So just like that, these will have their own force. But it depends on the shape of the tank. So this will be for rectangular tanks, but it will get you to a spot where you can figure out any shape after you see two examples anyway. So the force, if I was, I'm going to start with a sheet, one sheet. Can you draw it? I'll try to, that's not too bad for me. So here's <laughs> one sheet of water inside this tank of water. So guess how thick it is. Guess how thick it is. Can you say the word? I can't. Infinitesimally <laughs> thick. <laughs> All right, so the thickness is infinitesimal. That's very thin, very thin and infinitely thin. But it does have, um, it does have a length and a width to it. But its thickness uh -huh. is very thin. So if I was going to ask you to lift this sheet, if, it was the, if somehow you could grab this sheet only and lift it, there are several things that would determine how much force you would need. One thing would be how much area this is. So we're definitely going to have the area following the integral. So we're going to have the area, and when we combine that with the thickness, it's really going to be volume. So we're going to have the volume of one sheet, and we have to decide, part of that volume is whether it's going to be a dy or dx. Can you see the thickness is a change in what, Morgan, can you think today? Y. Well, yeah, it is a change in y. All right, because you're not up to par here. So the volume is going to involve a dy for its thickness. And when we come back and fill it in, you'll probably see the area is 6 by 12. So it's not, not so hard in the rectangular tank. So we're going to do that. What else would you have to know about this sheet if I could hand it to you to know how much force you're going to need to lift it besides how big an area it is? Another thing is what fluid it is because would you rather walk around with a bucket of water all day or a bucket of oil? I'm assuming oil uh, would be heavier. Is that true? I think, I think actually so. it is. So, we're going to have to give you something called weight density. And weight density of water is going to be 26. 
Nope, 64.2. So weight density of water. You might have jot that down as most of our problems are water. And the weight density is given in units called pounds per cubic foot. So the word per is there. 62.4. And you'll have to remember it because I have trouble remembering it. Can you put it somewhere in permanent storage? Water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So since we have water in our tank, that's the number that will appear here. So is there anything else that would uh, be involved with how much force you would have to use with this sheet? Can you think of another quantity, not quantity, I guess, another qualification? The volume, how big it is, how what the actual fluid is, and what else do we have to know? One more thing that would affect how much force to lift the thing, and that's how far you're going to have to lift that one sheet. So that would be distance. All right. Those three things will follow every one of our tank problems, no matter what shape they are. Container problems. All right. So I'll start out. I'll come back and do the limits, the numbers, in a minute. The volume is 6 by 12. And we decided it was the, the thickness was dy. So that is the volume. The weight density is 62.4. And the distance, that's a varying thing depending on what sheet that I picked. So if I hook this to the, uh, the x-axis or y-axis here and I call it xy, can you tell me, I'm going to lift the sheet from here to here. So can you tell me what that value is? Aaron, thinking back to how we thought of something similar on this when we were looking at volumes of revolution, looking for radii. Is, so, it, is this where it's like 5 minus x? Yeah, but this 5 minus y. Right, example. very good. So here is the y value of my sheet, but I have to lift it this, this much. So this is 5 and this is y. Do you see that 5 minus y is the distance? No matter where I put that sheet, it's always going to be 5 minus y. All right, I'm used to seeing my dy at the end of the problem, so I'll just move it down there. Um, Brendan, what can go across the integral sign? What numbers? Um, can you pull 6 times 12 over? Yeah, so we pull out a 72, and what else? So this can come across the integral sign. I'm 62.4. Right, the 62.4. This is getting too easy. So the, the uh, constants that are held as factors can go across. Can this 5 come across, Morgan? No. No, because it's not a factor. It's held by uh, subtraction. So we can't do that. How are we doing for time, Brendan? Um, we're 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, that's good. So I'm not sure what 72, I'll have you calculate this integral. But now we have to do the integrals, um, limits of integration. 5 minus y, like I said, is easy peasy to integrate. So what will these sheets, I'm going to, this is one typical sheet, but I've got to stack these sheets up from this whole tank. I've got to lift this sheet and this sheet and this sheet. And then I'm going to take an integral that will add the work to lift every single sheet. So, can you tell Morgan what I'm trying to get at? What will be the what will what will incorporate the addition of all those sheets? Um, From what to what? Five to zero. Zero to five is the way I say it. <laughs> I knew what you meant, and you're exactly right. All right, so go ahead and um, let me actually skip this part because we're on video and let me give you the answer. Oh, guess what? I didn't do it. <laughs> All right, I don't think I did. 
All right, I didn't finish it. So I'm sure you know that integrals 5y minus y squared over 2, and you'll put in the 5 and multiply it all out, and you'll get your answer. And the work will be in foot, foot pounds, is that right? Yeah, foot pounds. All right, so let me, I don't think you'll have problems with the calculus. It's just setting them up. So let me set up one more and... It's been 10. Okay, go ahead and shut it down. Give me a chance.